1206 and the August 24th, 2023 regular meeting of the Vernon Hills Park Board of Commissioners is called to order. Would those present please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Should I still say it in I case he calls it? Calls okay. It. President David Dorhofer has made a request to end this regular meeting by electronic means. Commissioner Dorhofer is uh, prevented from physically attending the regular meeting because of employment purposes. Uh, I am asking for a voice vote from each commissioner present, but that is okay. Yes. 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 Okay. May I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Geraldo? Yes. Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Vice President Senti? Yes. President Dorhofer? Okay. Items under the omnibus vote agenda are considered routine and or non-controversial and will be approved by one motion. If a separate vote on any one item is desired, it will be pulled from the omnibus vote agenda and voted on separately. Omnibus vote agenda items are minutes of the regular board meeting of July 24th, 2023, and then payables and payroll through August 24th, 2023, in the amount of $852,050.31. We have a motion to approve the omnibus vote agenda. So moved. Second? Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Geraldo? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Vice President Senti? Yes. At this time, the board will hear remarks from the public. Remarks will be limited to three minutes and no board response will be given. Are there any remarks to be heard tonight? Um, seeing that there are not, we will move on. Uh, Superintendent Mitchell, are there any changes to the financial reports on file for the period ending July 31st, 2023? No changes. Okay. Um, we're going to move the staff reports to the end of our business because some guests are here. Be a little more interesting for you. Um, I don't know. You're welcome to stay for all of it, uh, as as you wish. Uh, there are no commissioner committee reports or communications to be heard tonight. Um, we do have some correspondence from the police department that I will uh, read out loud. Um, this is from our chief of police, Patrick Kreese. Uh, Dear Jeff. As you know, on Tuesday night, August 1st, 2023, the Vernon Hills Police Department hosted its 26th National Night Out celebration. As in years past, it was a hugely successful event. Of course, the success we obtained was only possible because of the assistance and cooperation that was received from you and your staff. Uh, Jeff Emisa, Emisa? Emisa. Emisa, sorry. The event coordinator. Uh, has told me that many Park District employees assisted him during the preparation for the <coughs> event. Let's just say that everyone at the Vernon Hills Park District should be thanked. Again, thank you very much for your role in this year's event. Please extend my thoughts and gratitude to everyone in your organization. Patrick L. Kreese, Chief of Police. Mm -hmm. And it was a good night, mm -hmm. right? Thank you for him acknowledging that. Uh, there is no unfinished business. The first item of new business is the 2023 District Risk Risk Manual, uh, which we had a meeting beforehand on. So may I have a motion to approve the manual as presented? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Geraldo? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Vice President Senti? Yes. The next item of new business is a staff recommendation for uh, plat of survey and boundary marking of Lake Charles. We have a motion to award P. Clay surveyors the project in the amount of $9,500 for the plat of survey and marking boundaries. Second, please. Second. <laughs> Roll call. So I have a question. Oh, yes. Okay, so what is the purpose of this? Uh, at our Lake Charles Park chat meeting with the residents, uh, one of the 
complaints, issues, things that they brought up were the residents backing up to Lake Charles Park were encroaching on the Park District property. Um, there are no more vacant lots. So when we, when I first started, there was probably four houses. Now there's a, all of them are built and they've all taken their, they've taken advantage of extending their property, which Jeff and I, we just really didn't care quite honestly, uh, cause we really didn't have any plans, but now that everything is developed and we're going to have a park plan for Lake Charles, we should have a survey of a property line put in place and then mark it with some, um, some kind of steel so that we can find it with a um, metal detector and have a GPS located. So for future reference, and then they, all the residents know where the line is. Um, we are amenable to like a 25, 30 foot buffer before the wild grass area starts. And so we'll go off that property boundary survey line and then go 25, 30 feet. Um, this is also the west side of the park. We also own a small gazebo and there's about five houses that are doing something similar. Um, and one of them have asked us to clear cut some of their buckthorn because of the mosquitoes. So I want to make sure we're clear cutting our property as well instead of their private property accidentally. Thank you, James. Um, okay. Commissioner uh, Jacobs and I also joined uh, Jeff and uh, James when we were out there. And it seemed that um, the general consensus of the residents at that time were they wanted to have a little bit more consistency with who's mowing their lawn, who's not. They wanted more of the natural grass to come back. And so in order for us to move forward and make the first decision, we wanted to get this flat for the boundaries because as, as James explained, it wasn't uh, as necessary before and this was a request. So this is our first step. Okay, so we're gonna spend an estimated $9,500 to do this. Yes, it is budgeted. I, I am going to start budgeting for so this. So now they come and they do their survey and whatever, and now we find that one or, one or a number of the homeowners are over and are using our land. Now what? Do we take that area back away from them and say, you can't use this? What, what, what's our policy? Or consistently, they're about 30 to 40 feet of, some of them have sodded our property, which again, it makes their property looks nice. There's a buffer between the wild tall grass, which will help keep rodents out of their um, property, which again, we don't want that issue for them either between mice, voles, moles, um, insects, like ants. Um, so after we get the property survey, I think you make a good point, Commissioner Robbins, we should probably have something in our policy that states encroachment, or it's a little more robust than just the generic language, and then work with the residents on creating that buffer. Um, that was pretty consistent except for two or three residents who um, I don't think even back up to that part of the park. I think it is going to need to come um, through staffs uh, and discussing and making suggestions to us that the board should make a decision what we want to do moving forward um, because we weren't as strict about it. We didn't, we weren't enforcing a policy. So uh, we will, we will have to move forward with that after we do the survey. Yeah, I think that's important because I, mm -hmm. I disagree with anybody using our land, even if it's, as you say, just 25 feet. This is a kind of a larger issue for some of our other parks who don't allow fences, especially for their property lines. Uh, Greg's Landing is one, Peterson Park is another, Century is another. So we may maybe look the other way once in a while if they want to use our property for like playing soccer with their kids. Uh, but if they want to plant a tree that they think is in their yard, well, we have a line now. We can say clearly, oh, no, this is our property. Okay, so we will in the future have a discussion on this, whether we, they, whether we allow them to use our land. I think we should. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very helpful to go out there and see the situation because mm -hmm. of the uh, growing up of the invasive, invasive species around. And um, I understand some of their reasons for wanting to cut the grass and take care of it. There are people coming into that area, even though we own it to, to play there. And so um, I think that's part of the reason that we're, we're 
not feeling they're infringing. Um, but now this practice needs to be addressed because of the situation and it's going to take us several years because of funding to begin to cut back the invasive species and do what we need to do as well. So we want to be good partners with them. So it was a, it was a very good discussion. I felt like you guys handled it very well, and, but we, we do need to come back to the board for that. So thanks for bringing that up, Commissioner. Um, so with that, are we ready to take a roll call? Everyone else? Yes. yes. Amy? Commissioner Geraldo? Yes. Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Vice President Senti? Yes. The next item of new business is resolution uh, 423, a resolution authorizing the sale of a parcel of, a la parcel of land not exceeding three uh, acres in area. May have a motion to approve resolution 0423. So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Geraldo? Yes. Vice President Senti? Yes. So if I can just interject. Yes. Madam President. Um, so James and Kathy are here. James Barners and Kathy Johnson are the residents that we have been working with as a staff um, in terms of turning over this section of this property that we brought before the board in a couple couple other sessions um, a really you know property that um, is not usable for us uh, when Jim and Kathy bought this property not too long ago um, they realized that there was quite a bit of vegetation mature trees that they were told was their property until the plot came before them <laughs> and realized that it's really on Park District property and so they initially approached James with just some initial meetings and conversations about trying to annex that so they can kind of encapsulate and enclose their yard. Um, and so thank you for approving that. I think, you know, um, they've been, they've been a really wonderful, um, couple to work with. Um, and they're, uh, you know, everything they've agreed to the price that's before the resolution that the board had set forth. So I think uh, this is a win-win uh, all together. And I don't know if Jim or Kathy, if you either of you care to say anything, you're welcome to or... Um. Well, we appreciate uh, Jeff and James and their uh, cooperation. Uh, as you mentioned, it's a very unusual situation. The gentleman we bought the property from told us it was our property and then he died uh, during the process of closing on the property. So we never... Then when we found out through some research that helped them, it was a handshake deal with the former commissioner. So we've been irrigating the front end before we knew it, we were cleaning things at all. So what you were doing is making two little grandkids and a dog and their daughter very happy. <laughs> we're very uh, glad you came tonight and we have a chance to meet you and you to meet all of us and that this worked out uh, well and cooperatively for all parties and, uh, and we're glad that your grandchildren and your dogs and ever get to enjoy that and it's always nice to have a happy it's a happy situation right yes. so um, how, how many years I know you've been in Vernon Hills for a long time how long no, no, we moved in May 22 oh Okay. I didn't realize it. We just kind of took care of everything until we tried to put up a fence and they said, That's not the problem. It's a theme tonight, huh? <laughs> Be careful, we might charge you rent for this. <laughs> not after today. Not after today, right? <laughs> Excellent. Well, again, thank you very much. Come back anytime. Uh, we hope you enjoy our facilities and our parks and now your piece of land. <laughs> well, there are steps still. I just want to make yeah. this our, yes, right. our attorney now will file Proving this resolution the with the county. Um, there'll be a petition that has to be uh, published um, so that any, any property that is public owned has the ability for any citizens to oppose the sale of the property. Um, we, we find that it's highly unlikely, um, but it's a process that, you know, we've, we've at least expressed that to Jim and Kathy so they understand. So um, Andrew Payne is working on that document or will work on it now that the board has approved it. We'll get that before him. So it's still a little bit of a lengthy 
process before we can uh, deed the property over and, and close on the property with uh, with them. Okay. okay. If, uh, you know, on our vote tonight, don't we have to have a dollar amount that we're selling? It's listed in the it's resolution. In the resolution. Yeah. I'm back, yeah. Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so again, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting or, or leave whenever you like to. Uh, but Oh, good. <laughs> Wonderful. We love to have guests. Okay, moving along. The final item of new business is the announcement regarding the September 28th, 2023 regular board meeting. Um, as we do once a year, the September uh, 28th, 2023 regular board meeting will be held outdoors. So this year we'll be holding it in Hawthorne Melody Park. The address is 2221 Hazel Time Drive. A park chat will be held from 5 to 6 p.m. to discuss future renovations of the playground plan for the spring of 2024. And refreshments will be served during the park chat. And then after that, the park regular park board meeting will commence at 6 p.m. our regular time. Um, so we're hoping that commissioners will be coming, or not commissioners, we have to come out. Uh, we're hoping residents come out and join us. Um, uh, and then those who live around the area first for the park chat and then anyone is welcome to come uh, to the meeting. So hopefully that happens. So now we're going to go back to our staff reports. And uh, first up this evening is Finance and HR Superintendent Jessica Mitchell. Good evening. Good evening. In July, the district received 254,000 of property tax revenue. Through July, the district has received 3,120,000 or 51.7% of the 2022 $6 million tax levy. As of July 31st, the district has 8,577,000 in cash and investments. 4,800,000 is invested in 31 certificates of deposit with various maturing dates over the next 60 months. And 3,765,000 is available for cash flow purposes. In July, capital expenditures were 129,000. Spray ground equipment costs amounted to 96,000. Spray ground engineering was almost 3,000. Lakeview spa expenses were 12,500. A water line at Lakeview cost 4,000. Civil engineering was just under 4,000. Park asphalt paving expenses included 6,000. A memorial tree expense at 2,600 and $600 for ADA portable restrooms. The district audit is still underway. Field work for fiscal year 2023 was completed the week of August 4th. The first draft of the audit is expected to be available for review by the end of this month, um, which then will be shared with Board Commissioner uh, Bruce Robbins, our board liaison to the audit committee. Uh, after that, and after his approval and staff approves it, a uh, representative from Lauterbach and Amen will be at our September board meeting to present the audit. I, the district received the Park District Quarterly Illinois Park District Consortium newsletter from Fifth Third Bank. Vernon Hills Park District is part of the PCARD Park District Consortium. There are 31 participants in this group, and Fifth Third Bank has shared that through July 31st, the total spending was $8.93 million and is on pace to reach the next rebate tier that starts at $15 million. Last year's aggregate spending was $12.5 million. At 15 million, the rebate rate will be 1.32%. Currently, we are at 1.3%. Paderma provided a webinar to explain their recommended property casualty rate structure changes for member contributions beginning 2024. The hardened market has significantly increased Paderma's reassurance costs uh, due to economic inflation and other market variables. Paderma is proposing a 5% rate increase as a result of the constraints they have endured, but they have not yet passed on to members over the past years. There has not been a rate increase since 2001 for property casualty insurance. Their new rate structure is derived from the plan to use asset values instead of operating expenditures to calculate property contributions. They will use acreage instead of operating expenditures to calculate pollution contributions and they will use payroll instead of operating expenditures to calculate employment practices, liability contributions. And they will retain cyber contributions methodology, basing contributions on operating expenditures. They believe this will provide a better true value. This proposed rate increase will go to program council for voting in November. 
Uh, just a little bit for HR, our HR manager, Shauna Headkey, is focusing top pr priority to hire a part-time assistant at the child care, uh, at Little Learners for a child care teacher, part-time building maintenance, and assistant head coach for the Turtle Swim Team. She continues to recruit efforts also towards personal trainers, fitness instructors, and swimming coaches. Shauna will be working with Recreation Supervisor of Special Events, Jack Shearer, to share volunteer opportunities for upcoming fall special events to community members interested in volunteering. One to note is the Worldwide Day of Play on September 16th. Those interested in volunteering can visit the website and look at the volunteer webpage for Shauna's contact information. That concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Hey, um, I want to say something right to you. Um, I had a nice conversation with Director Fougerou about the Paderma increase because I was a little worried about it, right? None of us likes an increase and it's it, the 5% is, is, is one thing, not that that's a small amount, but we under, it's understandable that sometimes that goes up, but just some concern about these new ways of calculating and how that is additionally maybe going to make it higher um, because it, it seems Okay, well, we we're we try and take good care of our assets. And so if we're looking at our assets and the condition of those and the value of the asset, which we are just putting money into it, are we going to be penalized rather than them looking at operating expenses? I know it's a calculation and we can't petition a change to this, but if there's anything we can do to just make the, uh, our, the board aware of what actually may be the total increase and if there's any way we can you know, have any influence on, on how that moves forward would be something I wanted to ask about. Sure, and I would be happy to share, uh, once we get more information, uh, Les and I were on a phone call with Brett Davis, uh, the director over at Paderma, and um, he's wonderful at taking calls and working with us and providing information that we need. Um, he did share that they, uh, Paderma will be providing how what the rate would be if it was calculated with no change versus this uh, five percent potential increase if it's approved in November by council, um, what that will look like. So I would be happy to share that with you. Um, and then of course, any input that you have, I'm happy to uh, take into consideration and see what we can share with Paderma. They often are receptive to yeah, listening. Just to be very proactive, we had a good conversation. And it's again, not just the 5%, it's it's the change in the calculation, which seems a little bit more- so The question yeah. on that, is there a discussion of a cap? that it could um, not increase beyond a certain percentage? I don't believe that they had talked about a cap. I don't think that it's something that they have put into play. Uh, and so um, Commissioner Robbins is about the same point. So we'll just kind of all go ahead. Yeah, my, you got my, yours. Right, my, my question, I've got two questions for you. My first one is just to expand on what Carol was saying. Are they gonna go through and value our land, our fixed assets, our buildings, our structures? So they did that. Um, the they did bring in a company that did that two years ago, and uh, Les is going. He manages all of the assets that we have, so he's going to look at what they provided versus what we're valuing right now in comparison. And they are open to us making notes and letting them know. Additionally, we need to let them know about Lakeview, of course, because we have the changes over there and what may come um, at the Family Aquatica Center. They need to be aware of all of that as well. Uh, so yes, they are evaluating the assets. Because on our happening. financial statement, our audit report. Uh, all the fixed assets are valued at cost. And Les had, uh, through the learning experience, we had a conversation about how it, that is different as well. So, so it's going to be substantially different, sure. substantially higher when they do their valuation. Well, not necessarily, Bruce, because one of the things that we, we brought to their attention, what Jess talked about with this, this program we have called Asset Max, that um, we, we were very insistent that those numbers of how our facilities and our land and any of our, our, um, our equipment, that that value still remains the same. And they were amenable to that. So um, granted what Jess just talked about with, you know, the improvements at Lakeview, the improvements at, you know, the Turtle Creek, Future. I mean, those are all going to, yeah, the values there are going to increase. And, and in the last couple of years, like we picked up Lash and Park that the village deeded to us, um, which I think only helps us. Uh, but again, when you look at 
the you know the quotients they're using here in terms of land is valued at you know and, they're, and then they're doing payroll and so it's not I I, sus, I, I fully suspect that the five percent increase it's going to get approved it's been 22 years since we haven't had an increase um, and so the consortium, which is what Paderma is, 150 park districts that belong to it, um, are going to support it. And the the beautiful thing about I think this group with Paderma is that it is member supported. The board members are all people that are in people positions like Jessica. So it's not lay people that are employees of Paderma. It's really membership based. So there's a we're not the only we're not the only you know district that is concerned about it, um, but in, you know we got we still got a couple few more weeks and visits before we can probably come to you guys and and tell you this is going to be the impact for the district. Um, with certainty, it's gonna it's gonna impact. There's no question. Um, it's just that at what level and at what cost. But I don't. I feel pretty good about just at least our, our coverage of our assets are not gonna are not going to value up that considerable that it's going to be just ridiculous uh, uh, price for an increase. Yeah. Feel pretty so make sure that they take off that land that we were selling to these nice people. <laughs> 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 presenting the reports in September. Correct. Uh, is there an issue with, because we're having our meeting outdoors? No, and if you may recall in the past, they didn't have um, IT or audio visual. They just stood in front. So I think as long as they can project, I'm not sure if will we have uh, anything as far as microphones go, but um, other than Unlikely. that, I yeah, don't- we won't have any kind of a sound. Well, we could put a sound system, sure. but- no. uh, It's not gonna be like inside. Sit close, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's yeah. all. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, next up is Recreation Superintendent Tom Ritter. Good evening. Good evening. Um, as you're probably familiar with, we, we offer these uh, Vernon Hills Go Walks on a seasonal basis, I'll say, some more than others. And they've proven over the last few years that they are either really successful or not, not successful. The more we put a theme to it, the more successful they are. If it's just to come out and walk, turnout's usually pretty, pretty quiet. So we're learning from that. But I wanted to just mention that the staff did one, something unique um, a couple Fridays ago. They did a, a roller disco walk. And we're like, <laughs> why not? Let's try it. Well, we had almost 100 people show up, which was really nice over at Hartman Park. So we, we worked with a vendor who provided the, the uh, roller skates and we didn't charge anybody who wanted to do it. Get some free roller skates. They played some, Jack and his, the staff played some loud 70s and 80s music so people could have a little retro feel and it was really successful. And it was over at Hartman Park, which isn't always one of our central parks to do events. Drew a lot of people out, so that was really nice. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, our next one is on September 21st. It's a Thursday night. And it's one of our typically more successful ones. It's a glow walk where we, everybody gets a glow stick. So walking in the dark with everybody, it's kind of a fun one. So they, we, we start around seven o'clock at dusk and there's no registration. People can just show up, bring your dog, bring your strollers, whatever you want to do. Community event. Our final movie in the park is going to be tomorrow night, the 25th of August over at Deer Path Park. It's probably going to be around eight o'clock by the time it's dark enough to see the screen. We're going to be showing Mary Poppins Returns. And again, that's free. It's held at the north end of the park over by um, Warrington, the Warrington Road entrance. Um, a couple of events we have coming up in September. Our sixth annual family trivia night will be on Friday, September 15th here at the Sullivan Center. Um, it's teams of up to six and it's $50 a team. We provide pizza and snacks and we do a bunch of trivia and give away some prizes. So we encourage everybody, everybody to come out and sign up. Um, and the following day on the 16th, uh, we referenced earlier Worldwide Day of Play. Um, Worldwide Day of Play is something we do every year. It's free. It, it's at the north end of Century Park by the Sled Hill and the Pavilion. Um, it's from 11 to 1. And the whole concept of it is just, just coming outside and, and playing. It's, there's no, you don't register, there's no electronics, there's no nothing. It's, it's traditional games, but what we want to do is enhance it this year with some more cultural variety. So we're working with some of our staff that we know are from different cultures. 
uh, what, what are the traditional games you play in your culture that we can bring to this event and just diversify it? I mean, the potato sack races are always popular. The egg toss is always popular. The hula hoop contest is always, but there's so much other things that can be brought out that we just haven't experienced and people can get exposed to. So we're going to try and add a few things this year, um, but otherwise, same as usual. It's 11 to 1. Feel free to show up. Free event. Um, last couple of years, we've been building this Scarecrow Fest. It's based, it's on October 5th. This is a program you need to register for. It's a Thursday afternoon at Century Park Pavilion. Um, people bring out any kind of clothing they want, whether it's a, a flannel shirt or a sweatshirt or overalls, blue jeans, and then we provide all the stuffing and all the little accessories to build a Scarecrow. Um, and then when people are, we'll have, we provide apple cider and donuts and things like that at the event just to add some... Uh, environment to it but once they're done if they permit us to we take all of those and they're all staked along the entrance to Sullivan on Sull I don't know what you call it, Sullivan Drive right here and just adds a nice uh, fall theme to the to the to the entrance so um, again that's on October 5th it's at four o'clock in the afternoon and registrations open for that and as usual Polar Express is sold out that was sold out from <laughs> Right when the, the program guide came out, we've got 150 people on the waiting list, but there's only so many trains and routes you can do. So I appreciate everybody signing up. I do encourage them to get on waiting lists. It's happened before. One of the challenges to this event for us as, as staff is they don't, um, Metro can't promise you your route, your dates, until after our program guide is out. So we pick our dates, we submit them to them, and we put one in the program guide. And sometimes that date has to change, unfortunately. Well, if that happens and a lot of people can't go, this waiting list will come into play. So I, even though it makes it a long shot, I encourage people to get on the waiting list if they want to participate, because you never know. We'll try and accommodate as many people as we can. Uh, a few programming highlights. Um, everything I'm going to mention right now is in our fall program guide, so there's no need to like hit rewind or have me go slow. I just wanted to highlight some of these We've talked about the District 128 thing over and over again, how we're taking on adult programs. But just to, to rattle off some of the programs we're offering, canning basics, uh, be an herbal gourmet, exploration of wines for holiday meals, introduction to chalk painting, introduction to sewing. Um, we're offering a variety of glass blowing classes, and some of them are full already. So it's really nice to see these some of these niche programs doing well. Uh, we have a new self-defense program. We used to offer one that went away. It's back. And we're partnering with Ultimate Ninja in uh, Libertyville to do some obstacle course classes for kids. So we're seeing some enrollment that we normally don't see a lot of times in these niche classes because we tried to get classes that were successful before, not just wing it. Things that worked that can be moved over to us. So our goal is to take these and build on it by adding some more new partners as we go into the winter and spring program guide. Um, and for what it's worth, I, I always think of our program guide for adult general interest classes as about a half a page. We have three full pages this fall, so that might become four or five in the future, the way it's going. So very exciting from a programming perspective. A quick shout out to um, some of our camp kids and staff from this summer. Um, our Teens Helping Hands camp, that's the camp that does a lot of service projects and things throughout the community during the summer. Um, they always do a car wash, and the car wash rained out, so they had to reschedule it. So they didn't make quite the money they usually do. It's all donations, but they did raise $266, which goes into our family scholarship fund. So just a little thank you for those staff and kids. Um, a program that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's, it's a really, really quality program, is our Safety Town. Um, it's only held for one week in May, I believe, and one week in August. I can't remember if we still do it in May, but it's it's it is what it is. It's a it's a, it's for preschoolers and younger children. Um, we teach them about safety through games, activities. We have the police come out and talk to the kids and different guest speakers. But it's really nice that our park maintenance staff helps us set up um, on the parking lot, a corner of our parking lot at Sullivan, a secure place to have little roadways and mini buildings, so the kids get to go out there in the big wheels and learn how to stop and look both ways and drive on the roads. And it's a great little program. We had 28 kids do it this summer. It was in the first week of August, and just wanted to mention that. Um, if, any, if it sounds good to anybody with little kids, uh, sign up next summer. We'll keep doing it every year. And finally, um, our preschool returns. Um, the September 5th, the day after Labor Day, our preschool program resumes for the school year. Um, teachers are back in their classrooms now doing their lesson plans, meetings, trainings. Um, next Wednesday and Thursday, the 30th and 31st, is when parents and kids can come meet their teachers, get a little orientation, take a little bit of the stress off, see their classroom. 
Um, we currently have 110 children enrolled. In the last two years, coming out of COVID, we had 73 and 98, so it's continuing to build. I believe the 110 we have now is a little bit above where we were pre-COVID. So as a fair comparison to 2019, I think we were around 100 to 105. So uh, Julie's program is doing great. And most of these we're seeing as two-year-olds. And that's a good thing because the two-year-olds, you get them until they go to kindergarten typically. So, um, so yeah, all good, we're all, all getting ready. And PALS is getting ready. for. They started today with the new school year. So busy time. Do you take any questions? Lots of exciting things. Thanks yeah. for that. Um, I was interested to see some of the expansion of the adult program since we took that over. And I know your team does a lot in terms of trying to be creative and refresh. And so it was just an, uh, a nice things that we haven't seen before. Yeah. Does anyone have anything for Tom? Thank you, Tom. I meet with the um, Park District Advisory Committee before this meeting, which is why I was like three minutes late. But all five of them were there, and we had great spirited conversation. So nice to know Thanks that. Thanks for sharing that with us, yep. too. We knew where you were. <laughs> we knew you weren't just late. Uh, next up, Park Superintendent James Kim. Good evening. Um, some general park announcements. So staff are preparing to spray weeds, uh, both selective and non-selective pesticides. If there's any questions about what we're applying in safety protocols, please contact the Parks Department. Uh, the Vernon Hills Park District has 11 bodies of water within our property boundaries and the CV ditch that runs through seven parks. Just a reminder, fishing is allowed, but it's catch and release, and you must have a DNR license for those 16 and over. Uh, watercrafts are allowed at Century Park uh, with the use of a U.S. Coast Guard approved personal flotation device. Uh, we have seen a lot of people just going in um, fishing on canoes and kayaks without anything. We've asked them kindly to as well as the police because they've been called on. Um, swimming is not allowed in our Park District waters and we do not encourage that at all. It's not tested. Uh, park staff are planning to remove many of the exercise stations at Century Park uh, due to excessive wear and because they are duplicates. Um, we have budgeted to have some new exercise stations for 2025. Um, that includes Gross Point as well. Uh, Family Aquatic Center, um, our outdoor pools are closed and uh, maintenance staff led by Dave Swank, our facility foreman, are working to make some necessary repairs to keep the Lazy River open for 24. Uh, he is prioritizing uh, repairs as reusable items, meaning if we do any kind of renovations, we can reuse it for the new uh, mechanical system. Second is for necessities and safety, and third is anything seriously aesthetic that we should probably fix for 24. On some project updates, uh, the Lakeview Center water heater was installed on Wednesday, and there is a factory startup tomorrow. So hopefully everything goes well. Right now it's only running on one water heater, and I've not heard any complaints. Um, director visited the site for FAC um, Wednesday to go over the roofing at all five billings. That is scheduled to start September 5th and last about three weeks. Um, we're just taking off the shingle roof, replacing the four out of the five um, sunroofs. And then they're just gonna do some damage control if they find any, and that's gonna be a change order. That's, that's expected though. Um, we are under budget right now, so I have some money set aside as contingency. Uh, we're coordinating a new partition install here at Sullivan Center Gym A in September and resurfacing for Century Park and Lakeview Center's parking lot in September. Uh, we're asking the contractor for a 10 day notice as much as possible and it will be closed for one and a half days. We're looking, for a f looking at a Friday in September. Um, we're coordinating with Gaywalt Hamilton on our OzLab grant project over at Hartman Park. Um, we just received a sign rendering that we're gonna look at and prove. Uh, we are looking to put up two advertising signs that we're doing this project at Hartman sometime in mid-September, uh, one on Oakwood and one on Cherry Valley, so a lot of people can see it. Our utilities, uh, just updating the board on our six month for our solar panel production over at the park maintenance. It was at 74.16 megawatts. Uh, just to give you an idea, one megawatt is equivalent to powering an average US home for 1.2 months. Um, I switched over all of our utility accounts to a third-party constellation. Uh, we've already saved like 20, 25% on the first month because we got a lower rate per unit price for natural gas and electricity. 
Um, there is an IUPC board meeting next month that they're going to go over some significant rate increases for next year through 2029 um, that we're trying to hedge. Uh, right now, we're, we have a really good rate for electricity, uh, much lower than a lot of people, and so we've been kind of grateful for that. Lake Charles Park, uh, communication has been sent to the residents that attended the park chat last month. It includes a rough draft plan of action for the park for the next three to five years. If there's any questions, please don't hesitate to contact either Executive Director Fuji or myself. Uh, there is a soccer tournament VHAC this weekend, so I would avoid fairway drive if you could, and 45. Um, there's over 200 teams, uh, and we're starting to help line the fields today. Um, it is not a park district event. Just want everyone know it is run through the village. So if there's any questions, please contact the village. Um, there's also a varsity football game Friday night, and there's a junior varsity football game Saturday morning. So it's going to be busy. Um, I didn't realize P Chief Crease had sent that uh, correspondence, but in my board report, I just put in a village collaboration note. Um, although we are different taxing entities within the village, we do collaborate on many offerings for our residents. And some of the things I listed here are the Sullivan Center is the rain site for the Arbor Theater Concert Series. Um, the Public Works and Parks Department work together on setting up Vernon Hills Days and Rip Fest. And we also lend each other equipments. Uh, we work together at the VHEC site for lacrosse and soccer tournaments. We help line the fields and help with trash. Chief Grease National Night Out was a huge success, as well as their um, fishing derby at Century Park. Uh, we assist with Countryside Fire. They help us with CPR classes, and then we offer them our sites as training places, like the pool, surge tank. They've done confined space training. They've dumped the car into a little bit bigger of Big Bear Lake so that they can train on how to get people out of there. Um, just want to thank the police for just being an increased presence and a um, conduit for our vandalism and destruction in our parks. It's been really great working with them and them being really helpful in getting more patrols. And really, just want to thank the Village Development Office too for just working well with us, um, waiving some fees, getting inspections in in time, and just working with the Civil Engineering Department over there. So I just wanted to publicly thank all the entities for working together for our residents. Includes my report. Any questions? Chief Bruce? Chief Bruce. Chief Bruce. Question. I was wondering if, um, you know, you don't have to do this every month, but maybe every six months on the sol solar panels that we put up on our maintenance building, um, what the actual savings was in a dollar amount. Uh, if, you know, if you just every six months, if we could get a report like that. Uh, just a quick note on that. Just we, our electricity lowered by almost 40% since we signed the contract in 19. So our savings isn't as great, but we're not paying as much. So we were aiming for $6,000 annually. I think we're at like 4,200 annually. And yeah, we're not paying as much. Right. If we could just get a, a yeah. short synopsis. Sure. Amber, did you have something? I didn't. Oh, I thought you did. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of things. Um, one, I was wondering after we sent out the letter to the Lake Charles residents, if we've heard anything back. I know it just went out, but if not, if um, just from one resident uh, that has been pretty consistently communicating with James over the last several years, and so I've kind of taken that that wing from him and uh, um, communicated with him. Uh, you know, just relative to he's one of the residents that opposes the extension of the property lines, um, so. I think those are things we need to talk about, but that's that's uh, that's the only one. And I did get just just tonight, literally, I check it. I got a voicemail from somebody in that area, so I'll respond. I'm not sure what that's all about. That will all be helpful when we have our uh, continued discussion. Mm -hmm. um, the um, uh, second was when you talked about taking out the uh, duplicates and the uh, equipment over at Century Park, um, I know when something's very worn, it's a good time to take it out. Um, but, uh, and I should say, and and not but, um, some of the duplicates, if there's anything that is in okay condition, 
I just wonder as your park staff is out there and if people are using them, it's a, you know, a full year and a half before we're putting in something new, you know, maybe should we consider leaving some of it that's okay if we know someone's, someone is using it if it isn't uh, damaged or worn? So we've actually had signs up for about two months and I've okay. only had two comments and both of them okay. weren't users of the equipment. They were just curious on what was wrong with the equipment. Okay. Um, so we have a lot of benches, literally, literally just benches for people to do sit-ups or yeah. triceps and we've got three of them. Um, okay. Yeah. So things like that. Thanks. And the third is just a comment. Uh, I think it's wonderful that we you put in the um, all the things that we do with the village and even say that out loud so people can hear it. I know we've said this before, but the more I do some traveling and work with other park districts and, and, and hear what I, I just know that everyone doesn't have the relationship we have with the village, not even close. They have situations where they do nothing together and they're literally, or maybe one thing. And our list, this is like a partial list right now. There's more things. And so it, it really is nice. So thanks for bringing that up. You're welcome. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, next up is marketing and community. Oh, sorry. Next up is facility <laughs> manager, Lacey Marenko. Sorry, Marenko, and I got a, a syllable in there. <laughs> Hi, Lacey. Second okay. time today. <laughs> um, facility attendance for July 2023 was 7,478 visits. This amounted to 950 unique visits. The monthly and annual memberships currently total 1,248. This is held pretty consistent through the summer, but as fall comes around and the weather starts to turn, we do expect this number will increase quite a bit. Um, we have started using the CRM, it, the um, Customer Relationship Management Company, so I will be able to start providing information about free trials that are being um, requested and redeemed. So I will say that it, the information is starting to come in and we are getting quite a few free trials and people are coming in um, to redeem those. So it's encouraging to see that. I think it's because they're getting that immediate response in the email that they are starting to come in um, and redeeming those free trials. So it's great to see. Um, after s several delays with the, the equipment shed out at Lakeview, um, it has finally arrived and it is assembled. Uh, we have all of our equipment put in there that we need for the outdoor classes. So all of the classes are fully stocked that will take place out on the patio. The Mighty Kids Triathlon took place on Saturday, August 5th. We ended up with 112 red, uh, registrants. The new route was great out here. There was a lot of great feedback from the surveys that we did, but there were some challenges that were presented. Uh, after a follow-up meeting, Following the race, we did decide that we will bring it back to Lakeview for next year. Um, and we are looking at a date of possibly June 15th for next summer. So hopefully our residents and our volunteers will come back for next year. Uh, we have two brand new fitness programs that will be starting in the fall. One is called Fit for Life. It's a six week small group personal training program for ages 50 plus. Our trainer will focus on strength, nutrition, stress reduction, and motivation. I'm happy to say that registration is actually full for the first session for this program. We also have a new peak training program, which is a six week hill training program. Uh, it will take place out at the Century Park Hill. It will help build endurance and increase speed. The fall group X schedule is now published and it, is, um, it will be starting on September 4th. There's just some minor changes, including one water aerobics class that will be added with Nancy on Wednesday mornings. And that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Any questions? Thank you, Lacey. Next up is Marketing and Communications Manager, Cheryl Buen. Good evening, everyone. Um, the past month has been um, quite busy for the marketing department. We've, we're finishing up all of our rib fast marketing and then just went right into starting promoting all of our programs for the beginning of the school year and our new adult programming. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Um, I wanted to report that our Family Aquatic Center group on did its best ever. We've done this for three years. Since I wrote my report, I did get our second August payment. So our first August payment was 15683 Our second August payment, which came about August 
16th was 15,286. So for this season, um, we received $51,909 for this Groupon, which is um, almost 23,000 more than we received last year. So it was really successful. Um, we did get a quite a few people. I didn't I didn't add it up. I'm going to say 60 people of who um, visited our aquatic center through the Groupon did leave comments, which you can. I forward them on to our our um, staff, our aquatic staff, but really they all were very um, positive and people really liked it. So I just can't imagine what next year we'll bring when we have like our another new amenity if we decide to do a group on again. Um, so it was very positive. Over the past month for our website, um, page views were up 10%, uh, up to almost well, 41,682. Our top three landing pages were our Family Aquatic Center page, our home page, and then of course Little Bear Rib Fest. This is identical to August of 2022. Occasionally, I'll compare the, um, the two months a year apart. Um, referrals to the park district um, through this month came through our festival guides, Visit Lake County, and other media outlets, um, mostly due to Ribfest being um, splattered all over. Lakeview website, it was a steady increase over the past month, um, a total of 1,471 users. Uh, the top three pages were their homepage, pool and spa, and membership. And their new users continue to grow. Um, I've listed um, just a listing of every all of our marketing efforts for, uh, for RIPFEST. I did want to thank the Lake County Convention and Visitors Bureau, um, the, GL, the GMLV Chamber, and the Village of Vernon Hills. They did a lot of promoting for us, um, all free of cost, and they used their media platforms to actually share it even further. So thank you to them for doing that for us, and then um, a lot of other um, media outlets, as you can see. Over social media, we gained 92 followers over the past month. We have a total audience of 11,862. Um, we did hold a 50 hours of play challenge through the month of July. It is obviously over now. 47 children participated and we just encourage families to play outside and log their hours. So every child received a jump rope and then um, just just as a random drawing we chose a family and they just got a little like a, a basket of some summer fun toys to enjoy. I've also listed some of our um, most engaging um, posts through Facebook and Instagram for Lakeview and our district, and you can just take a look at it, those. Um, we had a lot of fun videos that our staff um, spent a lot of time on, um, thanks to Cassidy, who kind of heads it off, but Jack is, Jack Shear, our events, he's, he's like our number one actor. And then we had a lot of people, um, our aquatic staff and our volunteers and the MKT volunteers, the Mighty Kids volunteers, Everybody took um, part in it this month, so thanks to everybody. And that's my report for the evening. And some of the people in this room were in the videos, too. <laughs> Those were great. Thank you. Anyone have questions for Sharon? Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. And next up is Executive Director Jeff Bougerou. Okay. Well, first of all, um, to the board, I'm glad you got the Navy Blue uh, memo. Hello. To <laughs> Thank you for your time. I can look at the dyes here while we're wearing the yeah, so per okay. perfect for the camera. Um, yeah, Ribfest just following up. Uh, I just couldn't couldn't be more proud of our staff. Um, you know, we do not have a committee uh, like some other community events are, so it's really a requirement where all of our full time staff try to pitch in and take a shift. Um, a lot of behind the scenes things that you don't see. You see a lot of you know where Jack is kind of front and center. Um, but everybody has a role, um, you know, Debbie uh, Minsky from Jessica's staff that handles a lot of the finances behind the scene, Randy doing a lot of the IT stuff, James and his park staff just getting all the setup and then at the end of the night having to clean things up and get it ready for the next day. So it's just a great nucleus, a great team effort. And then you see the spreadsheet that I put at your dais in terms of this was our best year in the last 12 years in terms of a surplus. Um, I can remember some years that were, you know, pretty challenging where we were losing quite a bit of money. And I think a lot of that was because we were really focusing on paying and high, hiring really top end talent. Like Los Lobos was a band that was, you know, 40 to 45,000. Well, that exceeds even our whole budget. 
now for our talent. And so we're really focused more on kind of just providing good blues and um, good energy type of music. Um, staff will be having a wrap up meeting next week. Um, so if any, I know I've spoken to some of you with just some, some of your, you know, some of your opinions or comments and we'll share those with, uh, with Jack and Tom um, so that we can continue to run it. But thanks to the village uh, for their financial support. Um, and uh, I would encourage all of you to take Tom Cook up on his offer who said, I am gonna press hard my colleagues at the village level to make sure we get fireworks every year. That would be ideal, I said, Tom. We would gladly support that initiative if the village uh, wanted to do that. Because last year we had that as a leftover and you can see it just, it just brings out a lot more people to the event. Um, so that's, that's been great. Thanks to everybody for that. Um, we have a strategic planning workshop after tonight's meeting with Sarah Armstrong, who's present here, and she'll lead that um, for all of us. And uh, yes, Bruce, we will have some nice cookies for you in between mm -hmm. to make sure you get re-energized for this next uh, this next event. Um, great meeting tonight prior to with our decennial uh, efficiency committee. Special thanks to Rebecca Snyder and Tracy Kading for their commitment to joining this uh, committee and putting all the time and effort in that they have have to do um, performance. So our next meeting will be April 25th. Um, those are meetings that are open to the community if anybody's um, interested in that. Um, and then just just uh, just lastly, I think on some of the um, items that you had here before you tonight um, relative to uh, what we're talking about with Lake Charles in terms of just, you know, kind of confining and, and bringing just the um, the listening um, tour, if you will, together. We started with Lake Charles. We're going to be at Hawthorne Melody next month. And I think we need to have a continuum of opening up um, just conversations, whether it's, you know, even in the wintertime, if we can't get out to uh, an outdoor park, but um, inviting citizens from other parks. I think that's really gonna be important for us over this next year to tie in with just our survey. Um, and, you know, I think Carol, you've read that statement last month before about that's, that's really this initiative, I think of this board and this body as an organization to make sure that we want people to know, our citizens know that we invite your feedback we welcome it we want to hear from you um, we'd love to hear from you and there's just other conduits besides attending a board meeting um, we have the ability for people to comment through our website and then Cheryl administers that um, in terms of just distributing information so I just want to encourage our citizens to continue to provide any feedback they uh, they prefer to talk to us over the phone we love that too that's all I have tonight. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Um, Jack, is, are we still on track with um, Turtle Creek? I know we had to do some redesign and it was going to be um, just a little bit later into the year. I think you said early July. Uh, so you're talking any... specifically about the spray ground? Yes. Yeah, is sure. There any, um, um, is that still on track? Yeah, so the... Um, we're, we're still waiting on final um, drawings. Uh, James and I had a project meeting yesterday afternoon. Uh, we expect that those drawings will be in our, in our lap early next week. Uh, and then they'll turn that over to the Department of Public Health. So we're, we're on track for some time in October to commence with construction with a completion date of sometime in July of 2024. Um, our construction management team is trying to press for a July 4th uh, target date. So that's what we'll do. Um, and then, you know, Cheryl from the marketing end and, and we're working on new signage and just, you know, getting the message out there that from this day forward, it's gonna be Turtle Creek Water Park. And we want people to kind of address it as that, and even though you might see some things that we still call it the Family Aquatic Center just through attrition, you just, you can't get away from that. But once we get the new sign out front, like as you come in, you see the Family Aquatic Center, that Redwood sign. So we have um, a different sign that we've ordered and 
I don't know if it's if is it done yet, James, or is it? No, it's not done yet. Not done yet. Okay. So once that comes in, we'll put that up, and I think we'll start to change hands. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> um, we have Commissioner comments. Commissioner Robbins, do you have any comments? Nothing this evening. Okay. Commissioner Geraldo. No, none at this time. Commissioner Jacobs. Just reiterating thank you to everybody that put in their time for Rip Fest this weekend. It was fantastic. I was there both days and a lot of fun. And I, I want to echo the same because I you walk in and our staff was everywhere, whether it was in a ticket booth or just doing every job possible. We saw you and it, you are appreciated and the public appreciated. So thank you very, very much. And with that, um, having addressed all items on the agenda, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Geraldo. Yes. Commissioner Jacobs. Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Vice President Senti? Yes. The time is 7.06 and the regular meeting is now adjourned.